Hey everybody, welcome to Local Business Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Case, and I'm on a mission to help you. Every week we're gonna be talking to local business owners and experts to get their best tips, tricks, and hacks to grow your business. This show's designed to teach you, inspire you, and motivate you to take massive action and start to build your future-proof business. Whether you're just starting off or you're taking your existing business to the next level, this episode is for you. So let's get started. Hey, local business hackers. I'm your host, Carl Case, joined today by CEO and founder of Rush Bulls, Andrew Padalov. Andrew, welcome to Local Business Hacks. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. And Andrew's calling in from Colorado, right? Yes. From uh, our corporate offices in Westminster. Awesome. Andrew, you don't overnight become the founder and CEO of a concept that's now growing rapidly all over the US. You know, talk to me about this journey that got you to, you know, found Rush Bowls and now be all over. Yeah, we it, it certainly is not your standard journey, I will say. I actually started my career in New York City. I was in finance, high finance, and actually was global head of derivative uh, trading in New York City, fixed income trading. I worked at Morgan Stanley, Credit Lyonnais, and, and was global head for National Australia Bank, anything dollar related in large trading. And then realistically, 9-11 was a trigger and very impactful for the future of not only my, my life, my wife, my kids. My wife was in a tower in 93, the first time they tried to bomb it. And we're living in New York City. And it's 9-11. I'm in Midtown and my wife is her first day back from maternity and she's in the 20s and literally saw the plane crash in. I lost a ton of friends that day and it was really traumatic for me and for my family. And that day forward, I'm like, all right, I'm going to get out of New York. I want to move to Boulder and I'm going to start a company. And fortuitously, I was pretty good at being a very good professional gambler for the banks and and did well in that regard. But it afforded me the opportunity to follow a dream. And that dream really started in New York when I was, you know, we're talking about something about 20 some odd years ago. What were the choices for starting with kids to eat like chicken fingers, grilled cheese, you know, hot dog is awful, honestly, uh, the option. So I moved to Boulder. I always laugh about this. I bought a house and opened a business and literally had no new income stream. So it was really important for me to create a successful business. That was a very different take on eating. So it was, I started doing bowls and pioneer in the field, but we started doing healthy blended fruit and vegetable bowls right away. And and, and fast forward now, how many, where's Rush Bowl? So I actually only started, and it certainly ebb and flow. I started a wholesale company doing bowls with Whole Foods and and others, but I actually only started franchising in 2016, 17. So now we have 40 stores. We're opening another 25 at least this year. Um, So there's an incredible knowledge base when you've been doing it for as long as I have in terms of what works and what doesn't and why. So we really are... I think we're a lot different than a lot of the companies out there that try to imitate what we're doing, but we really focus on bowls and smoothies. We don't get into esoteric items, salads, paninis, smaller square footage, lower build out costs, much more efficient business model based on finance and delicious food that we have experienced over, you know, 20 years. Amazing. And for people looking to get involved with Rush Bowl, how can they? Certainly, you can always go to rushbowls.com. That's one word, .com. There's a whole information about the company. There's certainly a lot of information about if you want a franchise, what are requirements. Again, we're, we're really about efficiency, smaller square footage. You know, I, I try to emulate Starbucks early on uh, and really focus on the best, the best bowls and smoothies. And it breaks down 80%. 20%, like 80% of our sales of bowls relative to smoothies. These are meals. The biggest time of day is noon. So this is a you know a healthy lunch, dinner alternative, breakfast, dinner, or lunch alternative. Amazing. So you honed in on the who, the what, and the why. Mm-hmm. So 
Talk to me a little bit about how Rush Bowls has positioned itself in the ever-growing food industry and bowl space to be a pioneer and continue to be relative in, in this in this ever-growing space. Sure. And I, you know, I think that's such an important aspect of the business. Like what, why are we unique in, in this space? I know we created the space, but for us, it wasn't just about acai. You know, if you've been around long enough, acai was demonized for a period of time because they made such bold claims that were not true, curing cancer, yada, yada, yada. So what we do very much is very unique flavors within a broad set of bowls, right? So we can do green tea, we do spicy, we do very tropical, some more, you know, kind of savory-esque flavors also, and intermix vegetables into it. And then we're much lower calorically than our competitors out there because we don't scoop anything, right? So a lot of companies out there, I say cheat, it's it's not Plus cheating, efficient. but they use a sorbet or, you know, so the sugar content is way higher. It's a flavored sorbet opposed to actual fruit. We use fruit and that's why anything could be made gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, any which way your, your heart desires, because we don't adulterate anything. We're also not preachy about it. If you want Nutella on top of it, fantastic. You want chocolate chips on top? Great. You have the ability to get anything you want, how you want it in a very uh, positive fashion. And so, again, nothing scooped like that. So you don't have those sorbets. And you know what's really interesting about that besides is when you use real fruit, the product holds together much better because the fruit is actually very fibrous. So we do 30 to 60 percent of our business is delivery or, or pickup. And they hold together really, really well, like no matter where we are, we're in 22 states and we're growing that. So whether you're in Florida or, or, you know, Minnesota, it holds together really well, no matter how far they're going. So, you know, it's a much more stable product. And that's because we don't adulterate it with stuff that we don't believe belongs in a healthy bowl. I love that. Andrew, you talk about the importance of delivery. Uh, I come from the restaurant world where I wanted to empower as many restaurant tours to to drive to delivery, to have the numbers that you just shared with me. You know, how have those numbers grown over the years since you've seen aggregators like Uber and, and DoorDash come into the space? And then also how has Rush Bowls positioned its customers to ordering ahead and taking advantage of those avenues? Because I can imagine it really lightens up the feed on the restaurant when you don't have that in-person line there. Yeah. And it's so, I think, so important for restaurants, especially when they're small square footage and like ours, that kind of bigger Fridays-esque business model has really struggled through COVID and other items and other issues. We certainly, through COVID and, you know, certainly um, we've, we've had success. You know, we didn't really, weren't as impacted as a lot of other businesses through that period of time, just because we were really smaller square footage set up for it and health focused in terms of that growth is immense, right? You know, when I say 30 to 60% of our business is delivery or takeout, I think part of that growth for us also is we partnered with a company called Ola for high tech really. And that's a delivery app. It's one of the leaders in the field, publicly traded company. And they build, you know, an app that has a clean interface. It looks like our our software. It looks like our Rush Bowl menu. And that's really helped to have a very clean kind of process that someone or anyone can hop on, whether it's from a QR code from the website, place an order seamlessly. And it could be look like it's being delivered from us, but it's actually being delivered by a DoorDash or a Grubhub. So I think more and more it has to, you have to build a company that is somewhat tech savvy and accessible. If you're not accessible for a consumer to order, it's going to be much, much harder. And we did a big investment into that because we felt the growth there is is significant. And that's really helped our company because the average ticket on something like that is 20 to 30% higher because there's more options that pop up. So it's actually pretty interesting benefit from an online order. Amazing. And if we look at the the last 10 years with Rush Bowls and 2017 since franchising, now in 2023, 
over the last six years, how have you seen takeout and delivery grow for your business? And how do you incentivize customers to go through those avenues? Well, certainly COVID really was the trigger on a lot of the growth, right? Just having more sophisticated POS systems, having everything integrated really helped. And, it, you know, obviously went from like 10% to some stores, 60%. So that growth is probably by far the biggest growth area of any any area that we we have as a company, I would say most companies, right? So when people were during the heart of COVID, we could have run someone to your car or have you pick up or have it delivered. That really transformed the industry, I think, on multiple fronts. And that's a growth area we have not seen dissipate at all, even with things being normalized. So obviously that convenience factor is huge. And we feel that that will continue in multiple ways. So empowering the customer through technology. I love that. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So Andrew, I want to shift shift gears a little bit to you personally. So sure. I can imagine that early on you were wearing a lot of hats and hopefully now as you put the right hires in the right places and Rush Bulls continues to grow, what would you say is one of your best tips for structuring the team and, and saving time throughout your personal day as a CEO and founder of the brand? Well, I think part of it is creating a team, right? And everyone working together. I've been in organizations that people are not working together. And I think that starts with 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 the person on top. You have to create a team environment and look at everyone's strengths and weaknesses and bring them together. I think creating a strong team with a really single focus of success is really the number one thing for any business, right? I can take anyone from any background and look at me. I'm number one. I have really a finance background. Now I have a pretty hefty food background, right? So after all these years, I think it's really setting the kind of ideology of the company first, making sure everyone's really focused on working as a team. I think that works the best and, and just making sure you're using people appropriately using their strengths and weaknesses. And I think a continuation of having everyone always grow and and rotating them a little bit into different challenges. That's really, really important to me. To me, it's as much learning as anything else. And that's how I like to run a company. Awesome. Uh, I got a good one for you. So now that we're this far into the organization, I imagine your toolbox has gotten a hundred pounds heavier and 10 times bigger than when you first started. What's one of your favorite tools in your toolbox to use that Andrew wishes that Andrew had 10 years ago that now is bright and shiny and always ready? Well, that's a hard one because there's so many, so many things. You know, I think one thing I didn't do as much as I do now is research, like really research the heck out of everything. I came from an environment that you very much went with your gut and you made big bets based on how you felt. And I was lucky. I was right more than I was wrong. But in this business, I think doing your homework much more diligently in understanding the risks and rewards based on that. And there's a lot of people that have announced paralysis. You know, I was brought up in an environment that that was not ever allowed. So, you know, sometimes going for it, but I, I think just more kind of research across, across the whole way, being more deliberate about things is probably one of the best advice I could give, you know, even for myself, because I'm more, Hey, let's go for it. But really a little more thought out about it. Awesome. Yeah. Take always, always take a step back, push pause and, and really evaluate everything. Patience, you know, I'm not the most patient person, as anyone would say, and and I've learned to be a, a lot more patient for the most part. Awesome. Andrew, when it comes to sales, mm-hmm. everybody's looking for that tip to really sell more. What would you say as position Rushbolt or what was a product or something that you introduced that really increased sales outside of using Olo and, and having a, a partner that can empower your customers to order directly through you? I think always having unique flavors and not not like kind of getting confusing the consumer, like with salads, paninis, things that we we only have stuff in our stores that complement the other products like Rush Bites, stuff like that. Listening to the consumer, I think, is really important. They'll tell you, um, 
you know, order, the data does not lie, right? So we're very data focused. So understanding what that data looks like, why X, Y, and Z is selling and really promoting those products and honestly changing the products that don't sell, like really having that adaptability. And certainly our size is a benefit for that. It's not mega, mega changes that we could be pretty agile and and be consistent and on the same, but agile to kind of different unique flavors. Again, we're really focused on very, within the sector, we're very diverse, but we're also very concentrated within bowls and smoothies, as I stated earlier. So I think it's giving everyone an option for a flavor they love or an allergy that they have to deal with and an option for them, right? So it all blends together to have a happy customer. I think you also hit the nail on the head when you talk about allergies. The word gluten-free has exploded over the last four years in comparison, looking at at vegan and vegetarian and pescatarian, all these different terms in which people are are satisfying their dietary needs. And Rush Bowl really does an amazing job of that by segmenting different ingredients and not having a a one-size-fits-all option. So that's that's great. One thing we we also do is just kind of awesome. We don't upcharge on it, right? So- We feel that if you have an allergy of some kind, you shouldn't be punished for it. You know, you should be, have an option to have a healthy, nutritious meal. And, and, you know, our, ours are meals too. Like our bowls are 16 ounces. And so it's a, it's a pint. And then our smoothies are 24 ounces. So we don't really, these are meals to go. Uh, and, and we want to make sure that you're satisfied. We're satisfied that we gave you the best possible product. Um, and with the best flavor. So that's really important to us. Andrew, my last question that I'm entirely curious about is, Uh you know, you had a pretty, pretty crazy title, global director of us fixed income derivative training for the national Australia bank. How do you make that decision to jump from, you know, top level corporate America into, Hey, I'm going to start my own restaurant franchise and here we go. Yeah. Well, you know, that was not an easy decision because they were rewarding you quite extensively for that title. And I, when you're global head of derivative trading, you're taking bets every day based (laughs) for the bank. Right. And, you know, it's not broken. I'm taking the positions. So it's a big difference. And I thought nothing better than to bet on myself and do what I really want to do than making educated financial high-tech decisions based on just for money. And I, uh, I felt that, first of all, I didn't want to be in New York anymore. I didn't want to do what I was doing anymore. And I was, quite frankly, I was traumatized by, by what happened. So this just afforded me an opportunity to follow a dream and do do what I wanted to do and, and learn a heck of a lot doing it because if anyone tells you it's easy, it ain't, you know, and it's persistence. It's, it's, it's also having fun with it and hiring good people, making sure you do the best you can and, and go from there. So if you got a dream, go chase it. Yeah. And if they tell you it's easy, they clearly haven't done it before. <laughs> yeah. It's not, nothing's easy on it, but it, it's, it's also mine, right? Uh, I'm one of the few people out there that's 100% owner and we have no be- debt as a Rush Bulls. It's very unusual, the structure, the ownership structure here. So something I'm very proud of and, um, and something we continue to look to grow and, uh, and talk to great people like yourself. Thanks, Andrew. And congratulations to you, to Rush Bulls. I'm excited to celebrate your 75th location with you right around the corner. And for everybody that didn't get it, rushbowls.com, get connected, go try the most filling bowl in your area. And thank you from us and our listeners, Andrew, we really appreciate it. And thank you again so much for having me on your podcast. Thank you so much. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to head over to our site, local-business-hacks.com to check out the show notes and send me questions or ideas for future episodes. If you wanna grow your business, just like the people you've heard from here, Follow Local Business Hacks podcast and tune in for new tips, tricks, and tactics. Until next time, thanks for listening and keep hacking.